Monday is a time to recognize the American labor movement. You know, the contributions that workers have made to this country. Newsflash, black labor built this country. After slaves were legally freed in 1865, black folks had a hell of a time finding employment, joining unions, and eventually the labor movement. Because yeah, the history of labor in America is racist as food. Labor Day became a federal holiday in 1894 after a strike led by the American Railway Union, known as the Pullman Strike. This was a turning point in the labor movement, though it didn't benefit all American workers. Black Pullman porters weren't allowed to participate in the strike because they were not allowed in the unions, but they wanted to be. Black people were organizing unions way back then too. Some scholars even date black unions to as early as 1838. And in 1865, some African Americans were in white collar professions like doctors and lawyers, while some freedmen filled blue collar jobs like artisans, farm workers, laborers, servants, and caulkers. Speaking of ship caulkers, this is Isaac Myers. Born a free man in Baltimore in 1835, he started working as a ship caulker at 16. In the late 1850s, the white caulkers went on strike and even rioted against the well-unionized black caulkers, who were sometimes paid more than them because of collective bargaining with Baltimore shipyard owners. Ultimately, the shipyards fired about 1,000 black workers, including Myers. Isaac Myers and other African-American laborers organized the Black Run Cooperative Shipyard, the Chesapeake Marine Railway, and the Dry Dock Company. And they essentially employed themselves. Entrepreneurship, y'all. 300 black workers were employed through this cooperative. The shipyard was leased for 20 years, then it was returned to its owner. This success eventually led to one of the first national black labor organizations, the Colored National Labor Union. Myers became its first president in 1869. Their demands were simple, improve work conditions, eliminate discrimination within unions, and develop a national system of public education with equal opportunities for blacks. Over 200 delegates attended the first CNLU convention in 1869 and two representatives met with President Ulysses S. Grant. Frederick Douglass became their second president in 1872. But the CNLU soon dissolved after becoming divided over supporting the Republican Party or the National Labor Reform Party. Though the CNLU existed for less than five years, it led to the incorporation of black workers into white labor unions like the Knights of Labor. It also paved the way for black labor unions like the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. Established by A. Philip Randolph in 1925, this was the first African-American union to receive a charter in the American Federation of Labor, which later became the AFL-CIO. Randolph went on to become an outspoken leader in the civil rights movement. Finally, the work of black labor unions was recognized. Well, kind of, sort of. This is America, y'all.